Chancellor. Professor Creed has achieved a distinguished record in scholarship, leadership and teaching during her career at the University of Melbourne. She has held positions as head of the School of Culture and Communication, an inaugural Associate Dean of Equal Opportunity for Women in the Workplace, and in 2015 was recognised as a Redmond Barry Distinguished Professor for preeminence in research and teaching. Professor Cree's research has been in the areas of film and media, feminist studies, gender studies, and social justice issues. She was a key figure in the establishment of film studies as an academic discipline in Australia and taught the first university courses in feminist film theory, gender and psychoanalytic theory. She is the author of six monographs, including the internationally acclaimed The Monstrous Feminine, Film, Feminism, Psychoanalysis. Professor Creed's recent research is in the field of human animal studies, and she is co-founder and director of the Human Rights and Animal Ethics Research Network, funded by the Faculty of Arts. Professor Creed is a fellow of the Australian Academy of the Humanities and past president of the Australian Screen Studies Association. She was recipient of the inaugural Rainbow Media Award for the promotion of sexuality and gender equality in, Australia, in the media. Her books and articles have been translated into 10 languages, and she's a member of many international and national boards, including the Melbourne International Film Festival, the Board of Writers Week, and the judging panel of the United Nations Australian Media Peace Awards. Professor Creed has been a film critic for Radio National and The Age newspaper, and has presented keynote lectures at international institutions, including the University of Paris, Oxford, Manchester, Utrecht, Frankfurt, Hanoi, and UCLA. Chancellor, I present to you Professor Barbara Creed. I now invite Professor Barbara Creed to deliver the occasional address. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, graduates, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted and privileged to be speaking here this morning. I'd like to begin by congratulating all graduates on this impressive achievement, truly a milestone. When I was invited to present this address, I thought about my own graduation in the Faculty of Arts at Monash University in the 60s. I also thought about the importance of the arts, of literature, poetry, painting, film, history, philosophy, and the media. In helping us make sense of our lives, our journey in life, and the decisions we make. This leads me to my main topic, the importance of one's journey in life. We might all have different goals, but we're all journeying traveling along different roads, lanes, paths, tracks, byways, boulevards, and highways. I'm not just talking, of course, about physical journeys, but about emotional, philosophical, intellectual, and spiritual journeys. From Odysseus to Joan of Arc, even to Little Red Riding Hood, we're all on a voyage. And here I'd like to tell you a short anecdote about a very small journey of my own as a new graduate. I took up a teaching position at Kuirup High School in southeast Victoria, home of the Bunurong people. Kuirup, I was told, meant black fish swimming. I soon realised its significance. The area was very swampy. In the 60s, a new fashion object was just becoming popular with women, boots. So I bought myself a pair of knee-high boots. I thought, this might help in negotiating the muddy grounds. One morning I was walking down the corridor in my new boots to teach the class of four CR boys. They were a rather rowdy group and I was their only female teacher as I'd managed to keep them fairly quiet, even interested in what they were learning. Suddenly my journey was interrupted. I was called to the principal's office. It turned out he objected to my boots. He said, 
If I wore boots, I would lose all control over four CR boys. I protested. I said, I thought the boots might, on the contrary, help me keep control. In the again end, we agreed to compromise. I could wear my boots outside the classroom, but I'd have to leave them at the door and change into shoes before entering. Although a new teacher, I didn't want to give in. Then fate intervened. The year 12 results came out. My literature group had done extremely well. Almost all had gained honours, so the principal called me back into his office, expressed his delight over the results, and said perhaps he'd been too hasty and I could wear my boots after all. So I'm happy to report that 4CR boys continued to behave even better than usual. So perhaps I was right about the boots. In the arts, almost all narrative forms, from novels, films and paintings to plays, create characters who are on a journey, from the travels of Buddha, the Pilgrim's Progress and the Canterbury Tales to The Wizard of Oz and Rabbit Proof Fence. These tales are about coming to a crossroads, usually a symbolic crossroads, where the main character, like yourselves, one day must make an important and transformative decision. And this is the key point to these stories, transformation. As I lecture in film studies, I know one of the most important and socially aware film genres is the road movie, a popular subject with all film students. The first Mad Max film in 1979 started out being a hero story about injustice and went on to explore Australia's masculine car culture and anxieties about social breakdown and the energy crisis of the 70s and early 80s. These themes are incredibly topical. They were then and they are today, particularly in relation to the Anthropocene and global warming. Thelma and Louise, 1991, started out as a story of two women, best friends who decide to go away for a fun weekend without their husbands. The film became so controversial in the United States, some husbands banded together and tried to stop their wives going to see it, worried they'd get too big for their boots. Along the way, it explored gender and the empowerment of women, and I could see why the husbands were worried back then. The film also showed the importance of keeping a sense of humour. Recently, Gina Davis, one of the stars, discussed the role the film played in the empowerment of women and the development of the Me Too movement today. And Popeye, one of my favourite road films, directed by Kirsten Tan, Popeye is set in Thailand. It tells the story of a famous but depressed architect who encounters an elephant he grew up with as a child. He buys Popeye and decides to take him back to their country town. As they walk the highways, they develop a close emotional bond. As we watch, we see the film is also about the extinction of species, and elephants, of course, are under threat. For Popeye is alone. There are no elephants to be seen on the road. The arts continue to explore pressing social issues, many encapsulated in the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights of 1948 and new ones such as the rights of people with mental illness or a disability, also the rights of other species, the environment and of Mother Earth. Peter Singer, a professorial fellow in the arts faculty, wrote an important book called How Are We to Live? And I can recommend it to you all. And this is the key question. Once again, congratulations. And of course, the other most important thing in life is that like Thelma and Louise, you keep a sense of humour as you travel forward. Thank you.